Hello everyone and welcome back to The Magic Knitter. I thought it was a good idea to maybe do a short little video tonight showing you how to do the knit and purl stitches, which are the two basic stitches you need for knitting. Once you know them, the whole world of knitting is opened up to you. So let's take a look first at the knit stitch. Now, if you look at one of my most previous videos, you will see how to cast on. Or you can get someone a bit more knowledgeable with knitting to cast on the stitches for you. And just practice doing a few rows of knit. Just knit stitch. Don't worry about the purl one at this stage. Just knit every stitch. Let's see how you're going to do that. You hold the work in your left hand. Put your hand on top and just grip the needle like that. Let's see that again. Nothing fancy. Just hold it there. Your left hand is going to keep the stitches moving up to the tip of the needle and you'll get better at controlling them as you practice. Your right hand, put the needle over the joint here between your thumb and your hand and out the front and then you're going to have to pick up the wool. I suppose for me it's second nature but I like to thread it over my fingers like this. So it's running over your index finger, under the middle finger. Now some people just leave it off like that. I always thread it under my little finger because it just holds the wool a bit steadier and helps me to keep a little tension on it so I have better control. The first thing you're going to do is poke your right hand needle into the first stitch from the back to the front. Okay, watch it again. You don't go in here. You go in behind. In there. Okay. Use your right hand to keep that stitch reasonably snug. Don't let it go out like this. Keep it reasonably snug. Not iron tight, but just comfortable. And then you use your right hand to put the wool all around. Let's look at it again. All around. And then you're using the tip of the needle to draw it up. And you've made a new stitch. And you can let the old one off. And that's your first knit stitch. Let's look at it again. In the back. All around. Up through. And off. Now, common mistakes are to go in here, to go in between and not into the stitch. So just watch out for those things. You want to go into the stitch that's on the needle, not the one below it or anywhere else. In the stitch on the needle, all around, up and off. Now, that produces a fab. When you do the knit stitch for every row, the stitches are always turned the same way around. And what you get then is a fabric known as garter stitch. Why they call it garter stitch? I have no idea. There's nothing fancy about it. Garter stitch is just rows and rows of knit stitches with no purl stitches at all. So let's take a look at the garter stitch. There you go. Now, a lot of people panic when they have to count rows. How many rows did I do? Oh my goodness, nobody knows. The knit stitch produces a smooth V on the front. You can see them there and a little lump on the back. Okay, so if you want to count rows, the first row there is that smooth bit down here. Okay, and that's the second row. That's the third row. Four, five, six, 
seven, eight. So there's eight rows done here now. And another way of knowing whether, you're, because sometimes there's a, a, you'd be wondering, are you, am I on an odd row or an even row? When I did my cast on, the cast on tail ended up at the start of the first row. Like this. So, there you can see the first row, just like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why am I counting those bumps? Because that row was on the other side and this bump is the last row done. So I have eight rows completed. And I know I'm ready for row nine because the cast on tail was at the start of row one. So I must be starting an odd row. So I'm starting row nine. Let's go. Into the first stitch, all around, up and off. You see how my left hand pushed them up so that I could knock the stitch off? Don't let the second one fall off with it. In, around, up, and off. Now, back in the day, older knitters used to tell you, oh, don't take your hand off. Uh, you're not allowed to do this, and you're not allowed to... Th you can do whatever works for you. For me, I loosen my thumb a little bit, and it lets me bring my finger around. Still keep my thumb under the needle to balance it. But if I had to hold that tight, I would never get my finger around. I just haven't got that flexibility. So I loosen up here. And it works. And when you get good at it, you can speed up. Now, early projects, you're going to say to yourself, what can I do with all those knit stitches? What can you do? Well, if you put on, there's 20 stitches here, and I could keep knitting until I have a square piece, and then cast it off. And if you made lots of squares in different colors, you can sew them all together as a baby blanket. If I put on maybe 40 stitches, which would be about this wide, and made a big square, I'd have a washcloth. If you are going to make a washcloth or a face cloth, I would suggest using 100% cotton yarn. In maybe a thicker type like um, iron weight or something like that would work the best for a washcloth. You can put on less stitches, maybe 10, and knit a big long strip and make a hairband. Join the two ends. So lots of possibilities. Keep practicing your knitting and come back to the Magic Knitter for the next video where we will look at the purl stitch.